from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Actifio Data Driven 2020, brought to you by Actifio. Hi, and welcome to the Cube's coverage of Actifio Data Driven 2020. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host for this event is Dave Vellante, but joining me to help kick off this discussion is David Floyer. He is the co-founder and chief technology officer of Wikibon, of course, the research arm of SiliconANGLE Media, which includes also the Cube. David, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to see you, Stu. All right, so we, we've got a really nice lineup. Uh, of course, last year, Dave and I were in Boston uh, with the Actifio team. They had a really good lineup. Uh, you know, analysts, thought leaders, and of course, lots of users. You know, love to talk to those users. Uh, you and I are quite familiar with Actifio, uh, really the company that that created copy data management as a as a category and, and a solution out there. So, wh why don't we start there, David? You know, what what's the importance of copy data management? You know, here in 2020, you know, many years after uh, when Actifio had created it. Well, this year has really uh, amplified the importance of uh, copy data management and uh, being able to manage uh, across different locations, across different clouds, uh, manage the copies, manage uh, the, the reuse of data in uh, different places. Um, the, the, the COVID has really emphasized the importance, for example, of putting just backup onto a cloud because it's, it's, on many occasions, it's not going to be possible to get into uh, your own data centers or uh, if you're sharing a data center. So uh, automation and uh, use of clouds, multiple clouds uh, has really driven, uh, of, become of a supreme importance uh, since COVID has started. And, and that's how it's going to be from here on in. That's not going to change. Yeah, David, absolutely. I mean, we said for many years when you, you know, adopt cloud, you know, I still need to think about my uh, data protection. I need to think about security. Uh, those aren't just covered uh, because I have, you know, lovely object storage or it, you know, spreads things out uh, amongst the different cloud regions. Um, and even this year, as you, you brought up COVID, uh, we've been having so many conversations with, with, with companies. Uh, in many cases, they're accelerating or new groups are, are diving in and therefore we need to make sure that they take the proper precautions. So, you know, my, my, my disaster recovery, me, my backup is, is so important. Uh, maybe flesh out a little bit for us, if you would, you know, cloud, we've been looking at uh, that, you know, hybrid and multi-cloud architectures, how people should be building it. And of course, data, the critical component uh, that we look at there. What, 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 what should people be looking at? Well, <laughs> absolutely. If you're going to have a multi-cloud strategy, you, uh, you have to, there are several things which are really important. You have to be able to operate across each cloud natively in the cloud. It's not, it's not good enough to uh, just be uh, an appendage, if you like. Um, so, and equally important is that you have to make sure that you're taking advantage of the characteristics of the cloud, in particular object storage. Um, backup has always gone to object storage, but object storage itself is not that fantastic if you're trying to just recover something from a from a, a lot of different objects, unless you put an architecture around that, unless you make it such that you can uh, take uh, all the workloads and be able to address them in the cloud itself. And uh, in, in particular, what's very interesting is there are two fundamental philosophies of uh, moving to the cloud, one of which is that you migrate everything, you, you convert all of your databases to a database that's operating in the cloud that you go to. Um, and the other one is to say, well, that type of lift and shift is not good enough. What you want to be able to do is be able to use the same databases, the same applications that you're using at the moment, avoid that enormous expensive cost of moving everything and then be able to operate on those databases using the cloud principles, the cloud object store and have the same level of performance. Yeah, absolutely, David. I know I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, Dave's got, uh, you know, Ash, uh, the CEO of Actifio uh, on today, tomorrow. Uh, I'll be talking to David Chang, who's the co-founder 
uh, also owns the product there to, to really understand, you know, how is Activio building an architecture that meets what you were just talking about? Uh, and, and David, you know, things I, I've heard you talking about for many years, you know, uh, migrations obviously are something that uh, anybody in IT dreads. Uh, I, I used to say in the storage world, uh, it, you know, upgrade came with that four letter word. It was migration <laughs> because yeah. uh, you, you, you had to do that. And, you know, databases of critical importance. Um, one of the other uh, discussions I have is with uh, IBM and IBM has had a long partnership with Actifio, um, but they're also, they're, they're getting involved with that data usage. So maybe if you could expound yeah. a little bit, you know, how is it just, you know, the early days copy data management, I looked at it, it was a, you know, financial savings. It was okay, hey, we've got way too many copies out there. How can we enable them to be used better and not have, you know, just lots and lots of big capacity that the the, the storage vendors uh, as it was, you know, hard disk and then flash converting there. So, you know, how are we actually unlocking the value of data in today's world? Well, there, there are two aspects of that. Um, one of which is you want the, the original data wherever possible. You, uh, you, you want to have, be able to access that data as quickly as possible. So if you have, for example, a, a system of record and you want to be able to access that system of record, uh, it may be uh, one day, uh, you want to be able to bring it right to one day before, the, the day before, not have a week waiting for it. Copy management is essential to be able to access that data and the same data for everybody uh, and know that and know from a compliance point of view you have the right data so that's the first stage but then from a development point of view you want to have the uh, flexibility of using real-time data whenever you can so you want to be able to access any data you want from anywhere and know that it's the correct data uh, and and move your business processes from uh, asynchronous business processes to as synchronous as you can. And you can only do that with automation through uh, real-time data management. Yeah, absolutely, David. And it's even, it's even more pertinent right now as everyone is, you know, is, the discussion is, you know, work from home is becoming work from anywhere. Uh, so it's, it's not just, oh, hey, I, I can get into the data warehouse uh, and know that I have, uh, you know, a low latency connection when I'm sitting in the corporate uh, internet. Now, uh, you know, developers uh, typically are dispersed. People need to be able to access it. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the, the data pipeline, the discussion we've been hearing from, uh, you know, the CDO events that we've gone to, as well as discussions, you know, how does, you know, Actifio and the industry as a whole streamline that data pipeline that we started talking about? Yeah, that, that's absolutely essential. Uh, you, you, you have to have processes and procedures that identify the data, where it's going to go, uh, and, and have essentially a data plane, managed data plane, which is taking it from where it, need, where it is to where it needs to go, sharing the metadata across that fabric. Um, those are the ways that you build a consistent a uh, data pipeline where people know what the provenance of that data is. And the less copies that you have, uh, the more single copies of that data, uh, a, a, uh, a copy of record, uh, a single version of the truth, then the, the less complicated the systems become and even more the the systems between the systems the 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 human interaction that's required to to manage that data goes down so it and it makes development so much easier so a data pipeline is absolutely essential and it's part of that data plane and it's part of the overall architecture that has to be there we've lived in silos for so long and getting out of silos is not is not easy at all and uh, you've got to have the right tools to be able to do that. Yeah, uh, the, the, the keynote speaker uh, that Actifio has for the event is Gene Kim, somebody we've had on the Cube a, a few times and excited to have him back on at this event. Uh, what, what I thought was really interesting, David, I'd, I'd read his first book, uh, the, his first fiction book, I should say, he's also written many nonfiction books. Uh, the Phoenix Project was really the go-to book to kind of understand DevOps. I've, 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 I've recommended it to so many friends 
uh, people in the industry. His new one, the Unicorn Project, is really about software development. But yeah. what I found really interesting, because I, I, I didn't get to read it uh, earlier this year because there was just no travel, but made sure I did read it ahead of this event. And the, the lesson that it, it called out to me was, you know, moving faster, using these modern tools, you know, breaking through silos was all well and good. But the, the real turning point for the company was enabling that use of data. And as you said, that real time, not looking historically, but be able to react fast. So, you know, not giving away the secrets of, of, of the book there, but, uh, you know, it, it, a retail organization that could trial things, could update in real time what the inventory was and having everybody in the company get access to that. So the product people, the marketing people, uh, the field people, all accessing that single source of truth and that being fed throughout the organization really invigorated and drove uh, the, the, the ability for a company to react and move fast, which really is the, 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 the clarion call uh, for business today. So David, yeah, I, you know, any, any final words from you as to, yeah. you know, we, we've, we've, we've been beating that drum for years that, you know, data, right. data, data um, yeah. is, is critically right. important. Well, take, taking that specific example, if you can take that all of that data and then start updating the pricing uh, according to that data, you've suddenly uh, made repricing a, a dynamic event, uh, one that's going to respond to the customer and, and they, their characteristics, uh, good or bad, and the availability of those, uh, uh, availability and the uh, and the, the pipeline of products, uh, if you understand all of that, then suddenly your ability to increase revenue by being able to reprice more quickly, uh, automatically become um, amazingly uh, effective in terms of revenue increase. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I feel like uh, I remember back in, in the early days of Hadoop, it was you know, how can I make an ad better to increase, increase click rates? Yeah. Uh, but the, the promise of unlocking data today is to really understand and customize for that environment. So some of it is we can maximize profitability. There will be certain clients um, which are willing to pay for more premium products and others uh, that you need to have that form of yeah. value option. But when you understand the data, you understand the customer, you understand the need for uh, the portfolio of solutions you have, data can just be that key enabler. All right. Absolutely. Well, hey, David Floyer, thank you so much for helping us uh, kick off our coverage here. I uh, want to tell everybody, make sure to you know tune in for the rest of it. Uh, Dave Vellante and myself going through the interviews, of course, uh, on demand with Actifio as well as, uh, I'm sorry, live with Actifio as well as on demand on thecube.net as always. For David Floyer, Dave Vellante, I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you for joining us for Acti Actifio Data Driven, and thank you for watching theCUBE.